Hello and many thanks for joining us on this edition of the program, People, Politics and Power. I am Imoni Amarire. The curtains were finally drawn on the 2023 presidential election on Thursday, October 26, by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. The APS Court, in its ruling on the appeals of the PDP and the Labour Party and their candidates, affirmed the victory of the APC and President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the February 25 election. That judgment has now foreclosed any doubts and disputes that persisted over a period of 171 days in the election courts. And with politicking behind us, at least for now, we must now turn our attention to the critical issue of governance, which is the purpose of government and the responsibility of all ruling and opposition parties. Perhaps one of the most vibrant periods in the history of Nigerian politics was during the Second Republic when Chief Obafemi Awolowo's Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, kept the ruling National Party of Nigeria, MPN, on its toes, round the clock, by providing alternatives to almost every policy of the government of the day. The UPN and Chief Awolowo demonstrated clearly that politics does not end with electioneering scramble and struggle for power, but continues with a vigilant lookout for the well-being and welfare of the populace. The classical notion of democratic politics transcends winning or capturing power, but involves collaborations, competition, and the identification of policy options on a regular basis in the interest of the people and the nation. Opposition political parties can, therefore, not go to sleep after every general election and wake up on the eve of another election to converse for votes from the people whose interests they claim to represent. On the program today, we shall look at the roles and responsibilities of each of these critical stakeholders in the uh, onerous task of building a strong, vera and prosperous nation that we all so much desire. Nothing in the book says that it can only be done by a particular political party or a set of people or indeed a collective. That is why democracy provides periodic elections to test the faith and fidelity of voters in their leaders and their representatives. Now that the legal distractions are over for the president, his party and his team, what is the way forward? What does government owe the people? And how should it go about fulfilling its promises to the electorate? Right, these are the issues we'll be looking at on the program today. And we have a team uh, here and uh, those who are joining us virtually from across the country to take a good look at these issues. Right here in the studio, uh, my guest is distinguished Senator Titus Zam. Uh, he is uh, the senator representing Benway Northwest, and he's also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Rules and Business. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for time having me in here. Right. Yeah. We are also joined virtually from Lagos by Professor Samuel Gbadebo Odewumi. He is uh, a lecturer at the Lagos State University, and of course, a, re a regular face on this channel. Professor, thank you so much for finding time to join us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here always. Welcome. We also expect to join us from Sokoto in Sokoto State, Professor Yaya Tanko Baba. Professor Baba is a professor of political science in the Department of Political Science uh, in the Usman Danfodio University in Sokoto. He will be joining us in the course of the program. Right. So. Distinguished Senator, once yeah. again, thank you for finding time thank to join us. Thank you very much for right. inviting me to this program. Yes. Now, as it were, after 
a long legal battle that has run for almost 171 or 72 days, all of that, about the presidential election, yes. has been laid to rest. Yes. There are other uh, litigations, either in the State House or Assembly, in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, yeah. that are ongoing. But at least for now, from last week, Thursday, yeah. we are very certain that yeah. we have laid to rest the ghost of the 2023 20, February 25 presidential election. Correct. Right. Now, the focus should be on governance, governance. and what the responsibilities of politicians like you, yes. both of those who are in the ruling party yeah. and those who are in opposition should be doing. Yeah. First, let's have your take on what you think should uh, we should be doing from now on moving forward. Well, as uh, rightly presented by you, we have put to rest all the arguments as to whether President Bola Ametunibu won or he did not. The fact now is that INEC declared Tinubu as the president after the elections, and then the judiciary has confirmed that Tinubu actually won the elections. So two separate but critical bodies that have a role to play in determining the validity of the elections have all confirmed that Yes, indeed, APC won the election. And so it is a fact that Nigerians chose President Ahmed Tinubu to be their president. And that is already established. What is left now is for the president to justify that confidence that Nigerians repose in him by coming out a mass to vote for him as their president. And so for now, it is up to the president to now deliver all his campaign promises, which endeared him to the electorate, ab initio, which also led to their voting him into office. So the ball is now in the president's court. That's my take for now. When you say the ball is now in the president's court, yeah. what exactly do you mean? What exactly do you expect of the ruling party, the APC, which are, because yes. uh, that, that is the party that is yeah. in power now. Yeah, moving, Pre moving forward, and we yeah. know that the president has taken some uh, steps between yeah. when he was uh, inaugurated yeah. on May 29 yeah. and now. Yeah. But some people will say maybe those steps were tentative steps. Yeah. They were there were distractions of these yeah. uh, electoral uh, the challenge yeah. litigations and all of that. Now that yeah. is confirmed and yeah. he is the president of Nigeria. Yeah. What do we... Well, from, from the comportment of President Ahmed Tinubu, soon after he was inaugurated, it became very clear that, yes, he knew he had won the elections and has four years to rule this country. And that is why, as soon as he took over, he took very fundamental decisions, carried out very strong uh, policies that, to me, uh, made me to believe that the man came prepared. Remember that he campaigned for this job, and he won. The party that presented him also has his manifesto. He himself made some campaign promises in tandem with the ideology of the ruling party, which is the progressive uh, political party known as All Progressive Congress. So Mr. President has his own personal agenda, which has to be in line with the manifesto and the program of APC. That's why I said the board is now in his court to implement those programs of the party in line with his own vision and mission in the presidency of this country. And he has laid out those plans, which are captured or captioned the Renewed Hope Agenda, eight points agenda. So it's up to him to use these four years to put on ground those programs and policies as encapsulated in his Renewed Hope Agenda for this country. All right, we'll come back to look at what, how uh, the legislature, yeah. the legislative arm of government, yeah. uh, fits into all of this. Because, yes. I mean, uh, the government is not complete without yeah. the Legislature. active uh, uh, participation yeah. and uh, exhibition yeah. of the constitutional responsibilities yeah. of each of these arms of government. Yeah. Well, let's go uh, to uh, Professor Odewumi. Yeah. Uh, Professor Odewumi, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, let's have your take on what you think the responsibility of government and 
uh, opposition political parties should be in a presidential democracy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you have laid the foundation. Uh, and I will go straight uh, to first to the opposition that losing the election is just half of it. What they do when they are out in the poll, we let people know that the opposition has better things on ground by the level of um, uh, suggestions, alternative viewpoints that they converse and how well organized they are. As for PDP, it's time for them to go and put their house in order, me, very strongly, because it's only a strong vehicle that can uh, rest to power from a sitting uh, president. Uh, labor is another, I mean, very promising platform. Uh, I want them not to be discouraged. Uh, winning an election is not a child blame, it's not a sprint. And they did a very, uh, they had a good outing, I mean, in the last election. So they should not be discouraged. Uh, what they need to do is to now start working. And say, so when Tinubu got the, the certificate of election, he said this is a 30 year program, 30 year agenda um, that himself and the other Kondi has been on. So they should not think that this thing happens suddenly. It's by serious scheming, serious planning, and they, they will do Nigeria a lot of good. They put their ideas, excuse me, constantly to the government. Now, as to the winner, there are wins. Uh, four or five basic platforms around which, when you ask for that, I will, I will appreciate. Security is the foundation. We really have to get the security of this nation right. All the mean the going up and down meeting, chancellor meeting, none of this will come to nothing if we cannot secure our property and our people. Because all you do, if you do ten thousand bridges and they, they blow them up tomorrow, it's of no effect. So sure. we should get the and the Tinubu himself has some uh, templates of uh, putting militia on ground. That's how he became a Bado uh, presidential candidate, because he believed that if you put millions of militia on ground and he feeds them with, uh, what will they eat? Is it Agbado, cassava, and all that? So he should do that. Put boots on ground all over the country to secure our people, secure the farms, secure the roads, secure the universities. That's the, if he could do that, we half of the job is done. Secondly, is the economy. He really has to defend the Naira very strongly. And he could do that by securing the Niger Delta. The quick win is get the Niger Delta producing at minimum of 1.7 that uh, OPEC has given us, or even go to 2 million Naira per day. These are I mean, low hanging revenue that can we, we can use to shock uh, our deficit. Then, thirdly, there must be national healing. Uh, election comes with plenty of bruises for people's ego to ethnic groups, uh, and it should demonstrate by its appointment that this is a government for everybody. And I must mention specifically that it needs to, 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 to palliate the East uh, to make them happy and not feel sad that they did not vote for him. If Indeed, uh, it is said in the Bible that you go, if, if you are missing I mean, you're having 10 ships and one is missing. You leave the 10 and go after the one for nation building. And I believe this should reflect in his appointment uh, of the people from the East. And I think he should answer the, the demand of uh, Ohane say that maybe he should ask one or two ministers. Please, then he should release Kano, which is part of the national healing. It is, it is very important. Then the human capital, I will, I will talk about that later how to go about developing human capital. Let, let me, let me uh, stop for now uh, on those three points. OK. Let, let me come back to you here, yeah. uh, distinguished senator. Yeah. Yeah. He has talked about uh, three key areas yeah. that he thinks uh, governance yeah. can impact yeah. the country and the people, yeah. security, uh, the economy, yeah. and, of course, he talks about national healing, healing yeah. now, uh, where the, the first two can be very tangible yeah. in terms of 
uh, being felt by the people. Yeah. National healing may yeah. be intangible, but yeah. it's also very, it's very critical. critical. Yes. Yeah. So what, what, what's your take on all of that? Let me start with what is intangible, because it's also very important <coughs> in our quest for national development. You know, democracy as a system of government tolerates opposition. There is a legitimacy of every segment of the country to participate in the governance of the state, whether you are in government or you are outside. That is what the concept of national healing is all about. Bring every interest to the table. Let all groups feel carried along, including those that did not work for you. When you do that, you would have created the proper atmosphere for the implementation of the other two items that he mentioned. So national healing is very important. And I know our president is a very, very experienced politician. He will go out to ensure that all hands are on deck. Once he gets that correct, then he will be the right atmosphere will now be created for security to prevail and for the economy to be rejuvenated. So the, I, I agree with the professor for the I, I, items he has mentioned has been very, very useful in making sure that this country moves forward. So I also come from a state, for example, Brenner State where I come from, that is engulfed in serious uh, security challenges. We have this farmers' headers crisis that has slowed down the economy of the state. And I believe that many other parts of the country have similar experiences. If you go to the southeast, you have the iPod challenging the state. When you go to the north, Boko Haram, every part of this country has this non-state actors that and are- And in the northwest. In northwest. That are challenging the authority of the state. And I believe that when critical steps are taken towards resolving those issues, then the right atmosphere for economic development would have been created. So our president has it as a matter of both moral and constitutional duty to ensure that these items that he mentioned are given uh, adequate attention. Let me add that what makes democracy the best form of government is the toleration of opposition. Make them feel they are needed. Listen to their voice, no matter how bitter that may be. So that third point of national healing is very germane in ensuring that Nigeria experiences a new lease of life. And once he gets it correct, everything will fall in place. That's my take. All right. Uh, uh, we are joined now by Professor Yaya Tanko Baba. Uh, he is a professor of political science at the Usmanu, Usmanu Danfodio University in Sokoto, in Sokoto State. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Baba, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on. Uh, right, I'm sure that okay. you've been following our discussion. We're looking at uh, the, the role of uh, government and opposition in a presidential democracy. Uh, from your experience as a political scientist, what should it be, given the backdrop of the fact that now the ghost of the 2023 February 25 uh, presidential election has been laid to rest, and everyone now knows who the winners is and who the losers are. Yeah, there, there are no losers in democratic elections. All are winners, because the opposition parties also provide, I mean, from constructive, I mean, uh, 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 function, you know, to, this, to democratic stability, to democratic development, and of course, to, to the progress of democracy as a framework of government. So there's, there are no, practically there are no losers. Even the opposition parties who lost out in the presidential elections also have gotten six also in the parliament. And then the parliament, uh, that is where the true nature of democratic uh, uh, governance, I mean, uh, 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 processes uh, takes place. So uh, virtually there are two issues that has to do with democracy in the context of presidential elections, which is premised upon, I mean, on the issue of uh, separation of powers and checks and balances, and of course, the competitiveness of elections, and all, of course, the, the ruling party becoming dominant and concerned with governance, and the opposition parties also constituting themselves as watchdogs of the party that, that actually established government. One, the ruling party that, that, that wins elections, after election, it's now concerned purely with governance issues, just like the previous, two previous speakers 
emphasized. Whereas the opposition party, at the end of every election cycle, after having lost out, particularly at the level of the executive uh, uh, offices, for instance, failing to win the presidential bid or failing to win the governor gubernatorial election at the subnational level, they construe themselves as the watchdog of the strike. Therefore, they are concerned more with politics than governance because opportunity has not come their way to translate their manifestos, translate, to translate their promises, to translate their, the compendium of their policies, intended policies, into concrete reality that will have direct and decisive impact on the general public. But then the promises made by the dominant party or the ruling party or the winning party, the manifestos advertised during election and campaigns, the actions and inactions of government during the governance cycle, the, the, the efficiency or otherwise of the government in its general conduct, the constitution of the cabinet of the government, every bit of step that is taken by the ruling party is under scrutiny by the opposition party. Remember, during, immediately after elections, the public have uh, uh, are less connected with the government. The, the power to constitute government rests on the people, and after elections, the people have done their bid to elect the government, and they have limited control over government, and therefore the principles of democracy, which, which involves rule of law, transparency, accountability, probity, and efficiency, only the opposition parties, or largely the opposition parties and the civil society organization and the media are supposed to take on the government, the party in government, to hold those principles of democracy. Is the government abiding by rule of law? Is the government transparent in its own general conduct? Is the government accountable to the, to the people? Is the government open? Is the government conducted the affairs of the public in, in the, within the context of poverty, what appears to be the focus, the focus of government. If the government have activities just like the previous one, but last speaker said, listed about nine items, renewed hope agenda, security, uh, economy, uh, 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 if you like, uh, uh, sectoral, sectoral uh, 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 focal points of government. The government, the opposition parties are supposed to put the government on the scale to say, you have not done well in security, the decisions you have taken, the investment you have made in security, the procurement you have made, the mobilization of the officers, the rate at which security is degenerating in the country is nothing to write home, write home about. Therefore, the public will remain under alert, sensitized, informed, and mobilized about what is happening in government. And the role of the opposition party is to ensure that every step taken, every decision made, every action taken by government is put under critical scrutiny. And this is to create opportunity for the ruling party to be on the alert. Therefore, democracy is deepened, is ingrained only by the existence of opposition parties. And that is why democracy is described as a method of arriving decision, arriving at decision through competitive struggles of people's vote. Therefore, campaigns, election running campaigns, does not end after election. It also begins after government is, con is constituted. Therefore, the next round of elections, 2027, opposition parties are supposed to keep track and record of what the government has done over the period of four years for which it has been elected to govern. And therefore, it will come with the scorecard of the government where the government has misfired. Their emphasis is to show, to expose to the public the weaknesses, the limitations, the shortcomings of the government, and build on those gaps to promise the general public better outing in security, better outing in economy, better outing in peaceful co in, in coexistence, better outing in national unity, better outing in national integration, and so many facets of public life. Mm. Therefore, without the opposition, we, we can say democracy has no meaning. It is equal to, to dictatorship. Therefore, the opposition are even the most important component of governance after election. Right. Even when Pro Pro no Professor, Baba, Professor Baba, you have painted uh, what appears to be the idea.
Yeah. Now, well, uh, our experience in this country over time is that each time an election is concluded, the opposition goes to sleep and wakes up just on the eve of the next election, maybe a year before the next election, and when they begin to struggle for uh, nominations in their various political parties, that's when uh, the politics comes alive in these opposition political parties. They do not appear to know the, the responsibilities and the duties imposed on them by democracy. How do we cure that, that, that ailment in our political party? This is, this, this is a chronic disease with democracy in Nigeria. That is where the mess rely. And that is where parties and government do not seem to appear to do better after every election. Because the opposition, just like you said, rightly so, they go to sleep after election. We expect that at the conclusion of the election, election petition, I mean, election uh, proceedings, I mean, judicial proceedings over presidential election, that is when we are expected to see the opposition becoming even more organized. Organized, given monthly press conferences, giving speeches about the state of the nation, examining the trends in the economy, the trends in the, in the, in the, in the politics, the trends in governance, the, 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 the crisis with, with, the, with the society, with the state, and the crisis with, all, with all, also the government. This compendium of lapses and limitations and shortcomings of the ruling party can only be, be compiled when the opposition is alive, collecting data from the field every day and analyzing this data and coming up with position to tell the general public about the, the, the shortcomings of the government in power. But if the, the opposition party do not seem to value the investment of its own time, energy, and resources in understanding the trends of governance of the ruling party, then of course the electorate may not have the even the, the text, so to say, to listen to them a year before another round of election. Mm. All right, people. Pro problem. People, let, let, let me bring in a professor. Uh, Odewumi at this point in time to take on this issue also. Professor Odewumi, uh, how do you think that we can begin to cure this disease that Professor uh, Baba has just talked about? Yeah, I think, uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, that's why I'm, my appeal will go to Labour and PDP that are the strongest uh, opposition that they should look at uh, the strategies and tactics of APC yeah, I was going to say that. when Jonathan was there. Yeah. They gave him hell. And that's why they were able to wrestle power from him. So if they really mean to win, the next election is not that somebody will now go to um, <laughs> Middle East. I didn't want to mention a place specifically. And uh, I mean, rest there. Uh, that will be with, with go back to his business. Once you are involved, you are a full-time uh, politician. Yeah, he has they, said that he's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, uh, even yes, though he I says mean, he doesn't want to run for office again, but he is fully uh, in politics and he's not going anywhere. I was so glad by what he did uh, in that speech uh, because that I mean, minus a little uh, me, attention to the uh, court cases and imbroglio. His, uh, his speech was that, look, I'm not going away. And we pray that he has good health and is on ground. Um, that it, it was, some people may be, who never remember that uh, it, Gandhi was not really never a prime minister in, his, in, in India. But we still remember him today as the leader. Um, Tinubu was not anything in uh, APC, he was called the leader. So, we want um, Atiku now to rise and become a leader, not only of PDP, but of the nation. And I know he has that DNA in, in, in patriotism. So, because most of the opposition, the fighting, he has deepened our democracy, um, me, like any other person, whether in and out of government. So, we, we, we plead with him that issue. I mean, what, when he said that, I said, yes, it's a new day for Nigerian politics, because his voice from time to time, in Obasanjo um, that was no longer in government, is always taking the feet of those in government to fire. 
uh, to, to get it done. And he made certain suggestion, and it's part of the what I listed as part of the element of the national healing. I listed electoral reform uh, as part of the national healing. Because, I mean, in, in Nigeria, is um, any country at all, it's a work in progress. We will be learning and we'll be adjusting before we get to the, 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 the uh, promised land. Although promised land is an elusive land, we will always want a way to reform. So I want uh, me, the issue of appointment of electoral uh, leader, that is INEC chair, be taken away from a uh, political uh, politician. There are so many formation by which you can get that appointment done outside uh, presidential and fiat. Uh, so I think that then um, I think we also mentioned a reform of I mean, the technology, uh, how we can get it done that anybody, this is also something we should pay attention to. So I think, um, I mean, the, the, then labor, OB is leading a very vibrant generation. And I will be really, I mean, he will not be doing us any good if he can, if he goes back to his business and say, look, what to raw have lost. He has one of the best appearance at the first outing. And if he does his scheming and uh, with uh, Atiku and others, because that's what APC did, they, 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 they harness an amalgamation of um, uh, alliances. It is Nigerian politics for now. Nigeria, then I mean, Atiku mentioned rotation, zonal rotation, which is okay. He mentioned single term, uh, I mean, six uh, years, single term, six presidency. Year single term mm. which is presidency. Which is fantastic. This is the way we should go. We should not be bringing these ideas to the table that it let me, in the INEC president should no longer be uh, appointee of Mr. President. Then also, me, as I said, that he wants to give the way for younger politicians that's insinuated in his speech is going to be very fantastic. And I will tell him that Gandhi was never a president in India. But we all, the whole world remember what Gandhi did. So his job is not over, as he said. Let him stay around and help us drive the opposition, uh, with, which is a former vice president, uh, will be in order to give uh, APC to keep their leg to the fire. So okay. that may be, I mean, all this, uh, although this is a big, big tragedy, um, a bind of uh, 56 billion uh, luxury vehicle. I mean, nobody, none of the opposition is taking them up on that. It's only the masses and the uh, non NGOs. So the opposition should rise, um, unfortunately, because even their own member too, uh, they don't want to let go. So I, I think uh, we believe, we hope, we pray that it's going to be a new day for the opposition. All right, bro. Let me let me bring in uh, distinguished senator Zam now. Yeah. Uh, a lot has been said, but yeah. first and foremost is the fact that it appears that in the last eight years yes. of uh, President Buhari. Um, it, much of the opposition yeah. came from within the APC, APC yeah. came from the media yeah. and from civil society. Yeah. Uh, opposition political parties did very little yeah. uh, to, as Professor Odeumi puts it, put the leg of yeah. the government to the, the fire, fire. Yeah. At, at that time. Yeah. The, the, the legislature yeah. was, was also expected to be a check and balance on the uh, executive. Yeah. But is a lie that we didn't see much of that in the last eight years. Yeah. What should we expect this time around from the legislature, yeah. where you are, the political parties, civil society, yeah. and the media? Well, let me start by appreciating the concept of the watchdog. The watchdog rule of the opposition, uh, in theory, is supposed to ask questions where there is need. My experience in Nigerian politics over the years does not give the opposition that kind of uh, attitude that is expected of them, as already mentioned by the other speakers. And that is not wise. It's not good for our democracy, especially now that uh, there appears to be a general consensus that APC is the ruling party. Rather than other political parties sticking uh, to their tents and trying to ask questions in tandem with the concept of the watchdog, you will see people decamping, defecting, everybody coming to the center. You know, so the watchdog rule is completely eroded 
Therefore, the ruling party now has a field day to do what pleases them. So I would expect that uh, other political parties that are not in government should play that watchdog role to the best of their ability. They should stay in their parties. Stay in their stay party. Where they are, stay where they are. And be and ask questions. Yes. That is it. But when you now say the legislature should also take over that role, it's not possible because in Nigeria, where all resources are in government, we don't have a vibrant private sector civil service, I mean, civil society groups that can play that role of opposition independent of the resources of the state. It becomes very impossible. Because it's still a matter of bread and butter. The person you see in PDP now may need the resources of the state that is controlled by the ruling party. And therefore, it becomes impossible for the opposition to survive independent of the government of the day. So there has to be a general stable economic weather to sustain people wherever they are before they are able to now stay put in their domains and challenge the ruling party. Isn't so, that a reflection of the fact of uh, how the political parties are run? Are run, yes. So, the, for instance, because yeah. the parties themselves depend on, on state resources. Resources, that's so what wrong. I'm saying. Not on their membership. Their dues, membership dues, dues yeah. are hardly paid. You understand? So it's a matter of everybody looking into the central port for survival. So people now easily decamp. So for rule, for me, for us as a ruling party, we enjoy it. If you come, fine. The opposition that APC gave to the day ruling party was because the tiny bulls were there to finance the party. If it were not so, I can tell you, not many people would have the capacity to remain where they were. So there has to be a stable economic weather to sustain the opposition. And this is only possible through vibrant political parties and the civil society groups. Unless, as you mentioned, political parties have their own independent source of survival without looking into the central port. We will continue to have a one-party system, more or less, as eventually becomes the case in Nigerian politics. So that will. Do, do you do you expect, uh, distinguished senator, that yeah. uh, the president, say maybe in the next couple of days, yeah. maybe extending a hand of fellowship to the opposition parties to say, "Come, this is the task of nation building. Come and join me." That will be that. possible if uh, their leader Atiku had. Congratulated, Mr. President. I expected that I would say, having lost at all fronts, both in the field and in the courts, I have now congratulated my brother and my longtime friend, Asawaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu, as duly elected. That would have created the, the right atmosphere for Mr. President to extend. But I think Tinubu, being a magnanimous uh, leader, would also extend our olive uh, branch to Atiku. That is the right way. To, to go, but, but he's not being encouraged by the disposition of, uh, of, of the opposition. I think it's time they should also recognize that the, the, the ultimate goal is service to the country. You have your own ideas, I have mine. We are competing within the same space to take leadership so that we render service. So when one of us wins, if it's not about self, if it's about service, then you should be able to say, congratulations, my brother. Let me now bring my ideas to the table. That does not stop you from playing your own role of opposition. It's only when the person in charge fails or refuses to play according to the rules that you now have a duty to now say, hey, man, you are going off the track. This is how it should be. But when you don't create that atmosphere of accepting defeat, you now make the system not conducive for anybody to Should the president that. wait for that kind of encouragement? He's president of Nigeria. He should be the president of all. Can he not go out of his way to identify talents from any corner and from any political party but to, already did, to join me? The president has already done that. We have had some members of the PDP in his government. The FCT member, uh, minister, our own host, is from the PDP. As we speak, he's still a member of that party. So Tinibu has already demonstrated that large-heartedness and the ability to welcome good ideas from wherever they are. Uh, so I, I trust that the president will eventually do that to bring more of them that are willing uh, to the government of the day so they will be able to, to also contribute their quota to the development of this country. Mm. I see plenty of people doing that. But I want to insist that it is not correct for uh, Allah Hajatuk Abubaka to have failed to congratulate President Bola Amit. That would be creating the atmosphere for that spirit of 
postmanship to prevail between the two of them and even the other uh, gentleman, uh, Peter Obi. The, the opposition need to, to be more mature than what I have seen. Mm. Okay, let's uh, bring, uh, bring uh, Professor Baba into the conversation. Uh, the distinguished senator has just talked about well, what I may describe as the immaturity of your opposition yeah. uh, in, the, uh, in, in the nation building process and in politicking. What, what do you think of that, Professor Baba? Yeah, yeah I think it's just one thing for the opposition to, uh, to recognize and respect the uh, prevailing laws of the land uh, in terms of uh, declaration of winner, you know, uh, their right to also proceed to tribunal and to appeal the judgments at the first level uh, until the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land, and of course to for the Supreme Court to also declare. I think, especially, uh, the opposition need to recognize that these laws are uh, established for stability, for sanity, um, for Nigeria's prosperity, and that uh, just saying congratulations to the president does not mean that uh, you have melted into the ruling party, but then you have res respect for the existing prevailing laws. Even when you are not in agreement or you are, uh, you are not comfortable with these prevailing laws, I can see that the pro I mean, uh, Elijah Tiku Abaka raised a number of concerns about electoral processes, around electoral laws, and and of course, different other laws that needed to be amended to strengthen Nigeria's democracy. But extending congratulatory message uh, is one good and surest way of, of dousing the tension and creating an atmosphere of uh, uh, of, 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 yeah, of uh, rancor-free democratic uh, engagement. But then, uh, coming to be appointed into the government is not necessary for the issue. That's my, 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 my viewpoint. It's not necessary that because you are in a position, you must be in government. You said that uh, Suwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu played a pivotal role in organizing uh, the most formidable opposition platform in the country in the build up to 20, 2015 elections. And we have seen the impact of that, and we have seen how the PDP's 16 year rule ended abruptly with the, with the, uh, with the uh, formidable nature of opposition and its activities entirely in between election period. I think the PDP and Labour Party need to recognize that. If they are ever to rescue power from the, from the APC come 2027, the work will begin now. And that they have to do this service to the public, not to their parties. But we know how internally undemocratic, internally unstable, and internally and structurally weak those parties are, including the APC. But this is high time to come back to the drawing table to see where are our weaknesses as a party, as, as parties, as opposition parties. How can we start to improve Nigeria's democracy by organizing our house and engaging the ruling party on issues of huge concerns to the people? And this is the high time we become visible in the political space by asking questions and by demanding answers for those questions and speaking on behalf of the Nigerian public. That sympathy that we create of the Nigerian public by engaging the ruling party, the sympathy will extend until ele election period. So, Elijah uh, Chiku Abakar, Peter Obi, and the PDP, Labour, and other smaller parties need to recognize that democracy without opposition degenerates into uh, uh, autocracy. Mm. Therefore, Tyranny, we can have tyranny within democracy if the opposition is missing within the space. So it's high time the, the opposition parties should now uh, forget about you know, electoral, uh, 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 not uh, electoral judicial Thank issues. Yeah. It's, it's now high time to constructively engage the government. Thank and you then, so much. Uh, carry the public the, 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 along and then, of course, uh, wait until the next round of elections come 2027 and see what they are going to field. Thank you so For much, uh, Professor Yaya Tanko Baba. Uh, let me have a final word from uh, Professor Samuel Odewumi in uh, Lagos. What is your advice to both the ruling party and the opposition at this point in time? Yeah, my colleague has said about uh, congratulating, that is, uh, congratulating Tinubu would have been very ideal. After all, Jonathan did that. It's not a new thing. So it's still not mm -hmm. too late. Uh, would be in order to 
we go forward for the national healing. And then as a last word, um, I want the president to tend to the security of this nation. Look, it, 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 we are beginning to get used to the killings, the kidnap is still going on. He should put in more effort. Then human capital, education and health is very crucial. Then on the national healing, besides the INEC reform, which is changing who becomes the chairman of INEC uh, from that of president to an independent body. Uh, and I mean, the second aspect which I want to say is that if you uh, look towards to do one more appointment to, I mean, to give that zone a sense of belonging and release Kanu on a political uh, resolution grant. It's a moves that when he makes it, the nation is relieved. Even when the Kanu becomes a little bit recastrant later, people will say, ah, ah, maybe they've done this to you. So, and I think that, uh, I mean, with those major points about securing us, giving us a strong naira by increasing our fuel production and getting the economy going and national healing, I think it will succeed very well. Thank you so much, Professor Samuel Badebo Odeumi, uh, back here in the studio, distinguished yeah. senator. Yes. What would be your last word on this? My last word would be that Mr. President takes the security of this country very serious. As I talk to you, my own constituency is engulfed. My own local government area. As at yesterday, some people were killed there again by the herders. So the security challenge appears to be overwhelming the Nigerian state, and that is not good enough. Already, there is so much tension everywhere. But I take exception uh, against the advocacy for the immediate release of uh, people that are causing these security problems for the country. The Kano case you mentioned predates the Tinubu presidency. There is a judicial process ongoing. And to just rise up and say, release Kano, it may score some political points, but it may encourage other non-state actors to take laws into their hands. So we have to balance the two scenarios. Does the release of Kano automatically lead to the end or problem of insecurity in the Southeast? If yes, then well, whatever is the, is the legal implications, we will do that. But I don't think the problem uh, is about that individual. There is, is conscious effort to challenge the authority of the state, and no government would allow that to happen. Let the known state actors that want to take laws into their hands be dealt with in a manner that other people will learn some lessons. I'm not talking about a particular No, I, I think what Professor so Adelman was thing. talking about yes. is looking for a political solution, solution rather uh, than a judicial uh, solution to this. But then they will have to put all the cards to the table so yes. that nobody takes advantage and begin to challenge the authority of the state. So I want to advise that security be taken utmost in the next uh, days of the Tinubu And of course the legislature has and, uh, a role to, to play, play that. On, uh, yeah, on our part. We are ready to support whatever uh, arrangements that are brought to, on board. We, we, we explicitly screened the security chiefs when the president uh, uh, brought his uh, new uh, service chiefs. It's because every senator and every member of the parliament sees security as being paramount in our drive towards uh, national stability and development. So the parliament is willing and uh, ever ready to support Mr. President in whatever he is, he is, he is doing. Then the, the issue of uh, the economy, I also uh, rank it next to security. I think our Naira is becoming too valueless. There is need for a conscious governmental effort towards that direction so that the people generally in the country we heave a sigh of relief. There is so much pain in the land. And that's why I salute the president for coming out with this palliative arrangement. What is delaying in some places is administrative bottlenecks at the subnational level. So Tinibu needs to bring all the governors together and then rejig the, the machinery towards uh, addressing the pains of the new policy regime that he has adopted in the last few weeks so that Nigerians will come back and uh, begin to smile like before. That would be my take. All right, uh, Professor uh, Tanko Baba, uh, very quickly, let's, let's uh, touch on the issue of human capital development is a very critical uh, point that uh, Professor Odewumi uh, talked about earlier on. How do you think yes. that government can begin to deal with this and deal with it in, in an expeditious manner 
has to be able to make the desired impact within the shortest possible time? I think this is the, the human capital is the most strategic. You know, no country, no society will grow and develop over and above the quality of its own human capital. Uh, the Nigerian universities over the last, uh, in the last administration, have actually suffered the most uh, striking, you know, decay, if you like. You know, the, the investment of the government in education is way below UNESCO, UNESCO uh, standard. I think this government needs to take education very seriously. Uh, development, uh, technological advancement, uh, innovation, uh, discovery is key to industrialization and economic growth and development. And nowhere is better, uh, is, is, is regarded as the major source of this innovation than the, than the university. So the universities needed to, the government needed to listen to the university. The industrial action, incessant industrial action in the university must be tackled more proactively with the engagement, constructive engagement with the labor unions in the, in the university, so that we can create the, the enabling atmosphere for learning and for the university's contribution to economic growth and development. We must also invest in other level, lower levels of education because this is the basis, the basics education that actually fit into the universities and other tertiary institutions. And overall, the government must take education as a top on its priority. Otherwise, whatever we do, we will get it wrong. And Nigeria will not move an inch away from poverty, away from hunger, away from starvation, away from insecurity. All these challenges of insecurity, of economic uh, 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 backwardness and stagnation is linked to the low quality of our human capital and low investment in education. And when this is done, we can proactively and uh, uh, in, in the most, uh, you know, uh, strategic uh, manner address this very particular concerns in the long in the long run. But if we continue to neglect the education sector and continue to abandon the talents that actually exist in this very particular uh, hub of uh, the universities, remember in the last eight years the brain drain from the university is quite huge. Many even you know developing countries people from the universities are leaving Nigeria universities for even uh, you know low income countries. You know, and high-income countries are actually taking over the advantage of the frustration that actually exists in the university, and they are leaving, you know, and nobody seems to be concerned. The government seems not to be concerned. And, and this is actually creating a time bomb, a ticking time bomb for the country. So this should be taken very seriously as a matter of urgency and as a matter of emergency. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, a distinguished senator, you talked earlier on about, or Professor uh, Dovmi talked earlier on about mm. Uh, the economy, yes. and, and, and you made allusion to it. Yes. So what, what do you think are the quick fixes, the low-hanging fruits that this administration can, can, can immediately tap on and see that the, the standard uh, of living of Nigerians is, is much better than what it is? Economists will tell you that when a country is no longer producing the required goods and services, but is depending on import from other countries, then that economy is doomed. So as a quick measure, our president has comparative advantage in agriculture. Let the agro, agro uh, sector be revamped. Let, 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 let at least have enough food. Once you have so much food in the country, then the, the, the living standard of the people whose money is spent mostly on high you know, uh, purchase of uh, even uh, food items in the market, we now have surplus supply of uh, uh, food items in the market. Therefore, at least hunger will be dealt with. That is the first one. The second one is about the central bank coming up with policies that will reduce the, the rapid devaluation of our currency. I leave that for the experts to, to think. But for me, agriculture, every part of this country produces food. All that is needed is to government to take agriculture as a priority and encourage massive food production for the people to have at least the basic food to eat. Sometimes, some of these luxurious things we can't... This like, agricultural productivity yeah. is affected adversely by the insecurity. By insecurity, and that is why there is a network of problems. And so once security is dealt with, then all other parts of the economy will, will uh, take shape. So security, economy are paramount. And as earlier said, agriculture in the country should take a prominent uh, position in the scheme of things. So that people can have food. We spend 
have our, our, our earnings for, for, for feeding. And the cost is unaffordable now. And I can imagine if a senator has spent so much to just to feed my family, I can imagine what the average person on the street is going through. You know, so agriculture, food security. Mm. All right. Professor Odewumi, uh, finally, finally, uh, your last take on this. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me that uh, opportunity because on the economy, as uh, was being mentioned, APC should pick the mantra of labor of from consumptive economy to productive economy. That is the only way out. I was on the platform of a Chartered Institute of Transport Administration, and the permanent secretary was telling us that for every 10 containers that comes to this country bringing goods, only one are we able to load as exports. So how can a nation bring, thrive? Can your economy thrive? We, we, our economy is consumptive. 10 containers will come. We are only able to load one back. So I think that is uh, on the economy. And there are so many other low-hanging fruits. You have the agri. You have the mining, you have the uh, power that you have to fix so as to run other, other elements. So these are very, very crucial. Uh, and I think I don't want to repeat the essence of security. It's number one. Okay. If we have to abandon everything and secure ourselves. It's very crucial. Thank crucial. you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Professor Samuel Odewumi. Uh, is a lecturer at the Lagos State University. Thank you so much for your time this uh, uh, day. And... Uh, well, we're also joined from Sokoto in Sokoto State by Professor Yaya Tanko Baba, who is a lecturer in political science at the Usmanu Danfodio University in Sokoto. Thank you, Prof, for your time. And Thank we look you. forward to having Thank you, you having again. Me. Right. And Thank of you, course, sir. right here in the studio, Senator Titus Zam. He is uh, the uh, Senate Committee Chairman on Rules and Business. Of course, he represents uh, Benue Northwest in the upper chamber of the National Assembly. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank Welcome. you so much. Thank you for All having right. me. And that's our program for today. Please join us again when we bring you a fresh edition of the program, People, Politics, and Power. Bye for now.